Hi, and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode of Soul Level Conversations. Here at Soul Level Conversations, what we're doing is having a authentic, real conversations with women that are successful, smart, aware, high achieving, and there's one part of their life that they can't seem to figure out, which is their love lives. And here at Soul Level Conversations, what we love to do is dive, dive deep beneath the surface to really look at what's at the root of what's keeping somebody stuck in their love life. And so my name is Kavita J. Patel, and I'm a relationship expert, and some call me a love intuitive. And I'm so excited that you're here with us because we're having an amazing conversation with Kai today. Hi, Kai. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So Kai's question, I'm going to just jump right into it. Kai's question today is she's found herself in past relationships, really once getting into them, feeling like either she has to change or evolve and grow, or she finds herself feeling like she needs to support the other person in the relationship and really evolving and growing and changing to meet to like really meet each other. But as she's doing that, she's often found herself losing herself in the process. So a part of what she's asking today, one of her burning questions is, how do I move through that so that I don't hold on to this fear of really losing myself again in the next relationship? Did I get that all right, Kai? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to ask you some questions about this. So Tell me, you know, I'm going to kind of dive right into your past a bit so that I can get a sense of where this is coming from, because it's much deeper than just even the past relationships that you've had. And I really understand the pain of losing yourself or, you know, how you said getting into kind of a codependent relationship um, earlier when we were talking and that you, you want to break that cycle. So what was your relationship like, you know, with your mom when you were younger in particular? So my mom uh, was a younger mom. I'm the first of four children. And we were very close in the very beginning. Um, and as my mom had siblings, uh, we still maintained the closeness. Um, but as she was so young and working a lot, um, I found that we really grew up together. Um, and so there was a lot of the symbioticness of having a family unit like that was really positive and healthy. Um, but there was a lot of caretaking as well, not only just for my siblings, but also for my mom. Um, and so there are unique challenges to having a young mother and I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, so I would say it was a very great relationship, but we did have our struggles as well. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's just, just to be very clear, like we all, no matter if you've had like the best relationship with your parents and it was like, you know, rainbows and unicorns or the worst, right? The whole spectrum, it doesn't matter. You, we all have blocks to love, no matter what kind of parent situation you had. And I know sometimes when I get into some of this, it's, it's a little dicey because we don't want to, you know, um, um, you know, call out our parents in any way that feels hurtful, but also just enough to also get through what are the patterns and what's coming up for us. So yeah. I really hear though, that there was a lot of caretaking that, you know, you had to do in that process. And it was almost like, as you were raising yourself, you are also raising your mom in the process because she was so young. So um, may I ask you this, you know, what, what was, what was hard about that for you? You know, what was difficult about taking care of your siblings to support your mom. Um, and again, this is not a knock on your mom in any way. I really want to be clear about that. Um, but just what was hard about that for you? I think when I think about that, there's like three things that stick out to me the most. Um, I think the first one was that we had very different love languages. And so um, I am someone that quality time, acts of service, and 
um, physical touch is very important in order to communicate and be communicated with like uh, that, like that relationship warmth, you know? Um, and my mom is kind of the opposite. Um, and so I found that when she needed that support, that was often the times that um, she spent a lot of time with me. We were very, she hugged me lots. I mean, my mom was a very affectionate person, but as time went on, I found that that was very challenging. Um, having the lack of that, unless there was some kind of support that she needed. Um, what was, so, what was lacking just cause I didn't quite catch that. What was lacking? Uh, just like the, the, the hugging and the physical touch oh, and the, like, the physical affirmation of affection and those kinds of things. Um, I found that really those were most prominent when she needed support or honestly, it just was so far and few in between that I, when it happened, I would do anything, you know, for it to have more of it. Um, and then the, the other part of that was just that her being a single mom, um, and just having that perspective of a single mom and my perspective of men, um, that was very challenging as well. And then with my siblings, uh, it, it put a lot of strain on our relationship because I had that caretaking role and I struggled to be just a sibling. Yeah. I didn't know how to just be a sibling yeah. and appreciate them as people instead of just these things that I had to take care of. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and what was your, when you were growing up, what was your relationship with your dad like? So I don't actually know my biological father. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've heard, he was not a very good person. And um, my mom did all of the right things and he just had some mental illness. And so um, the person that I spent the most time with growing up was actually my stepfather, who's the mm -hmm. father of my brother and sister. And he was very affectionate. He was always spending time with me, talking with me. He was very cuddly and snuggly. Um, and he loved my mom very much. Um, but they were more of best friends. Like her relationship with him, I would say she loved him as the bestest friend in the whole world, but they didn't work out obviously as partners. Um, and then obviously my mom, who's been happily married to someone that I refer to as my father, um, they've been together for over 15 years now. And he's a good mixture of both. <laughs> you know, he's not too huggy, but also he gives a great hug, you know, and he's really good at talking about things with you and things like that. But uh, growing up, a lot of my core memories revolve around this one individual who did spend a lot of time um, being very snuggly with me and sharing a lot with me. I mean, I could sit with the guy for five hours and he'd answer any question that I had. Whereas mm -hmm. my mom, on the other hand, was very distant and you know, she was yeah. fun, so fun, but just on the emotional connection level, it was hard. It was hard to bridge that gap. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Okay, good. So, I mean, I might be pointing out a little bit of the obvious in terms of what you might already know, but a part of why it feels like, and tell me if this resonates with you, but the core of why it feels like you in relationships feel like you need to change or they need to be fixed in some way or supported in some way is of course, from everything that you experienced with your mom, you know, like that caretaking role is easy for you to fall into because what is in your subconscious is if I take care of everyone, if I'm there for everyone, then things will be okay. You know, yeah. like everything will stay in harmony. There'll be peace. Um, and, you know, essentially everybody will get their needs met except for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but it feels like you can control that as a little girl. So when you get into relationship, I think your first kind of reaction is actually to try to just support your partner a lot. Yeah. And because you're coming from that space of wanting to support your partner, you're then adjusting and changing from there. And I want to make that distinction really clear because some people will get into a relationship and just feel, and I'm not saying this isn't true, but I'm giving you this distinction, which is they'll get into a relationship and then feel like they need to change because there's a lot of inadequacy in them that that's why they need to change for you. It's actually like your energy goes out towards that other person and what they need and want. And then you adjust and change yourself to try to deliver on that. Does that feel yeah. true? Yeah. And the inadequacy part only comes up when I find that I can't change 
enough to yes. fit in with that. Yeah, yes. to help them. And then I'm like, oh no, like I have to work on this thing. And then they're like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> right. So I just want you to see that because it's actually a really big distinction for you to see that it's an, it's, it's an, it's an, you're getting this impetus to change from how your partner feels and thinks and what he needs or, or what this person needs. Um, yeah. Yeah. I resonate with that. Okay, good. So just even taking that in for a moment, what shifts for you? It just points it out into my face that that's what I feel like I have to do in order to feel like in order to validate that I'm loved or to even know that I deserve to be loved. Like, if, you know, I have to caretake and do these things and be supportive in that way because that's the only way that I know how to be loved or like feel like I deserve any kind of love or that I will get love. I, yes. I feel like at times that I'm only going to get love if I'm that way. Yes, that's right. And so is this new information for you? Uh, a few years back and I did learn about codependency, but I haven't really realized how closely associated that is with my relationship with my family until recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's not necessarily new, but I haven't really explored it yet. I've been a little scared to do that just on my own. Okay, got it. So I'm going to give you my version of what I think codependency is, okay? And um, so in my experience, when we label our relationship with even our parents, which sometimes can be codependent, um, technically speaking, um, it, it actually doesn't support us in our healing process and actually moving through the car what I call karmic patterns that we're holding, that are holding us back from really opening up our hearts and inviting in what I call soul level love, all right? Which is not only love from the outside, but just a nourishment from within as well. And so, you know, here's the thing. We are energetically tied to our parents, no matter what. So from a, I kind of put it into East West perspective, like from a Western therapeutic perspective, you know, there's a thing called codependency. But truly speaking, we are connected to our parents no matter what, you know, whether you rebelled against them, against them and had nothing to do with them most of your life, or you were totally there for them all the way through your childhood. Okay. And so we are connected no matter what. And so when we label it codependency, it actually, what, what, what feeling comes up for you when you think about it in that way? It's obviously gives me this like negative con connotation and, but it does, it makes me feel like I'm lacking or I'm unhealthy in some way. Right. So the definition is the definition and I'm not disagreeing with the definition, but what it makes right. you feel like is actually more important. Yeah. It actually makes you feel a little broken. It makes you feel like there's, there's something wrong with me in particular. Yeah. And that's what I want to actually dissolve because that doesn't support you at all. And the truth is, is that, like I said, we are energetically bound to our parents, no matter what way you go. Okay. And so there's nothing more wrong with you that you care, take, you took care of your mom and your siblings versus somebody that decided not to do that. So I like really want to just like say that. And then also, so I just want to let you give you permission to let that, that label of codependency fall away. All okay. right. Because it actually doesn't support you. Okay. Um, and this is controversial. So it's going to be, I'm sure I'm going to get comments about me even saying this, but if it makes you feel like there's something wrong with you or there's a negative connotation, it doesn't, it's not going to work for you. Okay. So what I would just call it is like, I really loved my mom. I really felt like the way that I could feel her love was to try to connect to her by taking care of her and taking care of my siblings so that she didn't feel so stressed out yes. because she is a single mom. That is actually what you did. Like if yeah. she doesn't feel stressed out, then maybe she'll give me what I need, which is, is a hug and yeah. a snuggle and some time and some attention. And that's all you were doing. Does that bring up yeah. some emotion for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? Like, of course, every child 
shifts themselves to try to figure out how do I, how do I feel the love? How do I get that love that I need, you know? Yeah. And to say that there's every, every one of us is looking for love outside of ourselves. That's the journey that we're all on as human beings, you know? And so that doesn't make you any, any different. You're just normal, like all of us, you know? <laughs> um, and so that's, that's really what you were doing. So just let the label fall away because it's not supporting you. And just to see like that little girl just really wanted to feel like there was space for her. So she tried to take care of everything so that there could be space for her. You yeah, know? that's exactly how I felt. Wow. Wow. Especially the space thing. Yeah. All of that. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And that's all you're doing in relationships, romantic partnership is the same thing. Like if I can caretake and make sure this person's okay, then maybe there'll be space for me. Okay. So what do you do about that? Right? Like, what do you, what do you do about that? <laughs> now that you can see it much clearer, what do you do about that? So really that's like my whole process in working with people. So I can, you know, I always say that because I don't want anybody to be under the illusion that there's like a quick quick tip or quick, quick trick to this, you know, we have to dive deep into some of this stuff to really move through it so that that fear for you of even losing yourself just falls away. It's not something you have to manage in your mind, which is where a lot of people within, you know, self-development go. You don't actually have to do that. It can fall away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So the, the very first kind of baby step towards this for you is to see and have an experience with your mom where you really feel like there's space for you, for you to feel loved in the way that you need. And here's the thing about love languages. It's a powerful, I, I love his book. It's a powerful way to start to see how people are showing love. But at the end of the day, we all kind of need all of them, you yes. know? And so it's, it's really about you experiencing with your mom that you don't have to take care of everything for her to have space, to actually flip it where you just ask for what you need from her without any paraphernalia around it. And to feel like you are receiving exactly what you needed without having to do very, without doing anything, frankly, I was going to say do very little, but I actually want you to feel it from a place of doing, like, it feels like you did nothing for it, you know? And then that starts to shift how you, your subconscious feels loved right now. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. And one way to start to even do that is you can even just say to your mom from that little girl inside of you that just desired it so much from that place, not from your adult mind or from an analytical mind. And, and you actually, Kai, seem like you're actually very in touch with your emotions. And so that's a power. You're, that's a powerful thing for you. Okay. Um, many people are very disconnected. So the fact that you are connected to that is huge. So just to be able to connect to that part of you and just be like, mom, I just need a hug because I'm going through this thing right now, whatever the thing is, we're always going through something at some point, you know, and I just need a hug. I need you to snuggle me. I need you to not let go until I say, you know, and that's just the beginning of it, of, of really, um, releasing this belief, releasing this pattern, karmic pattern, because this not only you yearn this, by the way, also Kai, because it's the very thing that has been passed down in your lineage through your, through your mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's also the very thing that I think your mom needs to, but doesn't know how to take in because yeah. of what she experienced. Yep. So you, as her daughter crave it even more because <laughs> she hasn't dealt with it. Does that make sense? So it's not just your stuff either. Okay. So you just starting there will support you. All right. How does that all feel to take in? That feels constructive and there was another moment where I almost cried like I think you talked about the the hugging and asking her not to let go until I say and like that 
that hit me like that's very uh powerful inside and the way that that translates into other relationships that I have in my life it's it feels very emotional you know yeah um I don't even know what to ask her or where to start with that but I know that the opportunity will come and I feel a lot more prepared for it and like the the terms of okay I know where that's coming from and I'm not going to feel shame about that I'm just going to go for it and ask for it and that's how I'm feeling (laughs) good that's perfect that's a perfect next step to take and know that you don't even have to have anything going on you can just ask for it okay it doesn't even have to be anything because I know you're a mom and as a mom we're giving also so much that sometimes it you don't need a reason you can just be like I have I have a toddler and I need a hug, you know? (laughs) So, um, so just to know that you don't even have to have anything per se. Okay. And you deserve it no matter what. Yeah. (laughs) Good. Good. You took that in so quickly. Um, and we got right to it. So that's really beautiful. Beautiful. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share in this moment? Um, I feel, I mean, for anyone else that's going through it, like you said, that that notion of not having to do anything for it, um, that is going to have to be something, that is something that I'm going to digest for a while and really work on coming to peace with that. And I think there's so many different messages attached to that. Why am I doing things in order to get love? You know, that conversation, I, I want to have that with myself. And yeah, but I, I, I promise to you and to everyone who watches this that I really will, um, I'm not going to wait for the right moment. I think what you said, that just hit me really well. And I'm just going to do it when it, when it comes, you know, and we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. And there's a key to it coming from that little girl space too. Okay. So there's much more around that, that I can't even go into at this moment, but just to really know that that's also a key part of it. All right. Okay. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. And it does, it translates to everything in my life. I'm, I'm an artist. So that's a big thing that I grapple with. And when you're an artist, you want to do what you want to do and (laughs) you got to let yourself do it. So yeah, Yeah. I think that will help me in my career as well. And as a mom and as a partner. So thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I really, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. It was like quite easy with you. It's not always easy. So it was quite easy. (laughs) So for those of you that are watching and are really inspired, Kai opened her heart and her life story to us today. And I really acknowledge and, and, and appreciate that. And if you feel inspired and you realize something for yourself, awesome. I want to hear all about it under this video. Tell us what your aha moment is. Um, I'll be reading all of them and responding. If you really liked this conversation, subscribe to the YouTube channel because you're going to get more episodes like this if you subscribe. Also, if you're wanting to go further into your patterns, your karmic patterns, then there will be a 45-minute masterclass. It's totally free. You can sign up for it right now. That the link will be underneath this video. So you just click on it. It'll take you to the masterclass. Definitely watch the entire video. And it's called five shifts to attract in your soul level love, bring down your walls and call in a a partnership that is your equal that accepts you for everything that you are. So definitely do that after this. And I will see you on the next soul level conversation episode. Bye. (laughs) 